Welcome to Purdue University College of Science Superheroes of Science podcast. I'm Stephen. And I'm Sarah. We will be discussing anything and everything related to the science classroom and interviewing scientists. Because as we know, the scientists are the superheroes behind the science. So join us as we learn about the scientists and explore current trends in K-12 science education. Welcome to our next edition of Superheroes of Science. We're here today with Stephen Hoffman, Assistant Department Head of the Department of Chemistry. Thank you. I'm glad yeah, to be here today. Oh, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Well, hey, we're successful in introductions so far. We're doing well. We're doing well. <laughs> awesome. So, Stephen, um, I found you on LinkedIn to see okay. what you have done before. I think I've only actually met you one other time mm -hmm. on campus. And so I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> and so I, I noticed your PhD was what, um, in, I want to say environmental, environmental and ecological chemistry? Environmental chemistry and technology. Oh, yes. Wow. Environmental chemistry and technology. So uh, what's that? So, so yeah, um, I, I should have expected that you'd look me up on LinkedIn. I should uh, really update that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my, my uh, doctoral work was in environmental chemistry and technology uh, in, in a program that actually when I started was called the Water Chemistry Program. So it's really a... Uh, an environmental chemistry, um, trying to use chemical techniques, chemical analysis techniques to understand processes in the environment. Oh, what um, research were you doing as a part of that? I worked mostly uh, in rivers, so looking at, at trace metals in rivers um, and trying to figure out the, the dynamics of how trace metals move in rivers, some of the, the, um, the kinetics and equilibria of what sorts of reactions trace metals will undergo mm -hmm. in rivers. Um, uh, particularly as they interact with with everything else that's there. So, so one of the interesting things about environmental chemistry, in particular, is that it's not a nice, clean system ever. Right? <laughs> yes. um, and and you know, we were looking. You know, we, we we would model uh, uh, compounds in, in very broad terms, sort of saying, you know, we know that this is an organic compound. We know that it's uh, that it's probably plant based. Mm -hmm. We know, therefore, it's probably got some some structural groups that are common in biological molecules and plants. Beyond that, we really don't know what it is and we're never going to find out because it's, it's been formed through the, the degradation of plants over, mm -hmm. over you know, whatever time scale. Uh, and we, we can look instead just at sort of the, the, um, the activity of what it does to the trace models and, and how okay. it binds them or moves them or makes them more or less bioavailable as they move into, uh, into eventually uh, fish. So what's a, an example of a trace metal? When you mentioned trace metals trace in metal. water, what's an example of this? Uh, they're, they're, they're the ones that we were working with, you've probably heard of, you know, things like copper and lead, uh, mm -hmm. and zinc, uh, mercury. Um, so so n things that are in, in water are going to be at the levels of parts per million or lower. Um, but uh, and, and also the ones that we're interested in tend to be the ones that are, are going to be potentially toxic, either to uh, people or to the biota. Yeah, makes sense. And what sorts of instruments were you using to take your measurements? So, so I, uh, I did two things predominantly. Mm -hmm. So, so one of them is just, just looking at, at the total amount of metal in or trace metals in, in various different uh, uh, fractions of the water. Okay. Uh, and by fractions, I mean things like, you know, the, obviously the dissolved species, or we would we would filter at various different sizes to get particles of various different sizes. Um, we would even do what's called ultrafiltration, which will filter out something uh, based on molecular weight. So you can get, you know, uh, organic compounds that are in the 10 to 100,000 uh, uh, atomic mass units mm -hmm. molecular weight, um, and then the metals that might be associated with those. Okay. Uh, and then we would analyze, uh, depending on the metal, uh, most often with, with what's called an ICP mass spec, um, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a pretty powerful instrument that's used to uh, look at, at uh, elements. It's an elemental analysis machine to look at elements at very low levels. Um, and because it's a mass spec, you can also look at the isotopes mm -hmm. for some of the metals and, and some of the, you know, many of these metals have more than one isotope. Um, and that can also give you some information about the, the source of the metal. Okay. Great. Now, I, I want to go into here in a few minutes the um, kind of your career path after you obtained your PhD. Right. But, but before we go there, okay. I, I want to back up even further. Right. What got you interested in going into and pursuing a PhD in this? 
So yeah, um, I, I, I've listened to this podcast before. I, I, I was yeah. expecting yeah. that question. I'm ready, ready for <laughs> well, it. Oh great! You know, one of us is going to throw that <laughs> that's out. Right, that's right. That's yeah. right. Um, so I mean, I think what what started me in science was a high school teacher. So I, I had a really good chemistry teacher in high school who I, I liked a lot. He gave us a lot of freedom to do things that were a little bit outside of the textbook, mm-hmm. um, which I realize now is sort of scary. But at the time, <laughs> was was you know more like science really is, right? We we weren't just simply going through the book and just simply going through the mm-hmm. you know, filling out the forms and, and the yeah. sheets and the worksheets. We were, he he would allow us to um, to experiment a bit. And I'm sure he knew more than we did, so he probably made sure that things weren't going to blow up. But we didn't know Hopefully. that, so it was fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. um, so then I went to university as a chemistry major. Okay. Uh, and, and, and when I got there, my first chemistry teacher was also a fantastic professor. Um, and he inspired me to teach. So that, that was sort of my goal at that point, was I was going to become a, a, a chemistry teacher at a university. Oh, wow. Um, so that's the PhD then, right? So yeah. if you're going to be a yeah, chemistry teacher at the university, you need to be going on towards the PhD. I, I, I'll admit I was not initially motivated by research. I was initially motivated by wanting to teach uh, mm-hmm. at the university level. Okay. Um, so then, you know, I'm a chemistry major. I want to teach. I'm sort of looking around. There's lots of different types of chemistry. And, and I, I stumbled upon uh, geochemistry first. Um, mm-hmm. So, so first, just a class in geochemistry, and then realizing that there is all of this chemistry out there in the environment to do, mm-hmm. um, and it seemed more interesting to me than than anything just simply in the lab. It seemed mm-hmm. more interesting to be out there trying to figure out processes, um, trying to figure out things that were really complex. Um, so that that's when I, I moved on from there to to the PhD program in, in water chemistry. So I, now you're in my personal area more because I yeah, yeah. understanding the world is something that I've, I mean it all eludes me. But I like being able to stand there and be able to think about all right, what what could have happened here? Mm-hmm. You know, how could these metals get here? You right. know, and and it, what would be signs and evidence and yep. all those are and, things that intrigue me personally as well. And and it's interesting, you know, at a university, universities are organized in strange ways sometimes. But but most people doing environmental chemistry work at a university are not in the chemistry program. Most of them are going to be in geology or going to be mm-hmm. in EAPS or sometimes mm-hmm. in civil engineering or in agronomy or uh, various yeah. places across campus. Agricultural biological engineering has some people doing really great water chemistry work here. Mm-hmm. So there we're, we're all around trying to look at the problem from various different ways. And that's something that surprised me since we've started doing these. I realized how, I mean, even like in my department, when we talk to people from my department, mm-hmm. it's I realize how much they're doing in it's like they're not just uh, i'm not just a hydrologist i right. am right. doing yeah. they're doing so much chemistry and physics and all Biology. these different subjects mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. there's no such thing Even as like a, a true just yeah. a pure seems like there's no such thing as a pure chemist right. we have mm-hmm. a chemistry class in high school Right. And well, even college, we have intro chemistry, but that's just giving you building or resources for building blocks for you to go right. research something in our world. Yeah, one of the things that my my PhD advisor uh, kept kept pushing me on. So anytime I would write anything or talk to him, he, mm-hmm. I could almost guarantee his first question would be about what's the process here. He was very into figuring out sort of underlying processes that are happening in the environment. I think that's, mm-hmm. that's common across environmental science. Anywhere, anything mm-hmm. in environmental science what you're looking at is trying to understand the process so that you can potentially predict or you can potentially figure out what's going to happen in a different situation. You know, it's fine to go to one site and understand everything about that one place, but really you want to know something about the rest of the world too. So you're, you're asking what are the processes that are happening there. And when the question is about process, sort of to your mm-hmm. point there, when the question is about process, you use all the fields and all the tools and all the knowledge that you can to get there. So you use the chemistry and you use the biology and you use the microbiology and you use the, uh, the physics and the geology if you know it and you use everything that you can mm-hmm. to try to understand what's happening. And it sounds a little bit like you were sort of set up for that kind of um, questioning and things based on what you said from your high school experience because one of the first things you said was, he was sort of approaching it more, how, I think he said, how science should be. So right. is that sort of related then to... It, it is, it is. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a question-based view of science mm-hmm. that, that you, you, you go into something because you have a question that you want an answer to, mm-hmm. not because this is a particular field that's already been answered and you need to learn for a test. And, and that, that's what excited me about science. I, re- I like that, that it's not everything has been learned and that there are right. all these questions. And right. That's a really good point. 
I'll add to it. I mean, we were reviewing student projects today that were submitted mm -hmm. uh, through the GLOBE program, which mm -hmm. you're aware of the GLOBE program. Yep. And uh, we're reviewing projects that students submitted to that. And I, uh, some of the questions I thought, you know, it, it, well, because I, I, I've done enough research myself, or not like a research scientist in that aspect for what they were studying, but I mean, I, I guess I have enough background knowledge that mm -hmm. I know what they're going to find, but I love the questions they're coming up with. Right. right. Mm -hmm. and I, and I, I love that some of them, one of were reading, was talking about, well, we found out there wasn't a correlation. We could not, or in there, then they reordered, we could not find a correlation with our data. And so right. I'm like, that's what mm -hmm. we do. Right. You know, right. And that's right. what I wrote on their, on their paper. I mean, I, that's one of the comments. I'm like, that's science. Right. Right. Coming right. up with that is. Mm -hmm. So I was so excited that they were, I mean, still, they didn't like, oh, we didn't find a correlation, just give up and not turn in their stuff. Right. Right. They, uh, this is what science is about, and that's what's cool. And, that, and that's especially science, sort of research science at the university level, is mm -hmm. that, that you know, it's, it's not worth it to do anything that you already know the answer to. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Got to come up with those questions. That's right. I like yeah. that. So let's go after the PhD. I said we'd come back there. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, you've had, I mean, you've been here for over 10 years Over now. 10 years, yep. And so it, what, and I've seen the positions you were in, I looked mm -hmm. at, and so explain what led you into those, what were attracting, what attracted right. you to those positions. Right. So, so yeah, I've had sort of a, a, an odd path forward since, since the PhD. So I started actually teaching chemistry and environmental studies at a university level, and I did that mm -hmm. for, for several years. Um, and then when I came to Purdue, I moved more into student services administration sorts of roles. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't actually do any science anymore. I haven't um, done laboratory work of my own mm -hmm. since probably about 2007 or 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I miss it, sometimes I don't. <laughs> 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 um, and, and instead my roles uh, in now three different departments, first in environmental and ecological engineering, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. then in first year engineering, and now in the Department of Chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, my roles have been more on on supporting students uh, and, and and getting them into the place where they need to be to, to do the science. Um, so, so in my current role as, a, as assistant head in chemistry, uh, my primary role is with the graduate students in the program. Okay. So we have we have about 330 graduate students working oh, with. It's, it's a lot. It's a big program. Yeah, I know. It's we are Purdue has the second biggest uh, chemistry graduate program in the country. Oh, wow. nice. I didn't I didn't realize that. Um, and and uh, working with about 50 faculty and. You know, I don't do any of the science. They, they go off and into mm -hmm. their research groups and work with their faculty and work with their colleagues to, to figure things out. But I'm there to help them through the process, help them understand what, what opportunities are here, um, help them, uh, help fund them, right? Because mm -hmm. graduate yeah. students mm -hmm. need to, to um, eat also. So. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I know if you have free food, they show up. They, they do, <laughs> they do. That's, that's the best way to get them to show up. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Well, I see. I, I like that, and I actually I love that because a lot of times we focused um, because we took what we took low hanging fruit. You know, it's like oh, people around us are, were completely saturated with research scientists right. around right. us, right. so right. we grabbed them first. But as we move on, we want to more show a more. There are lots of things you can do in the sciences. Mm -hmm. There are That's so true. many things yep. we do in the sciences. Now, the bulk of what we picked in our first season were mm -hmm. research scientists because they're, that's what's walking the hallways. Right. right. You know, that's a, hey, could, hey, I need a podcast <laughs> victim. I mean, help, a person. Uh, can we, hey, guest. can we interview you? Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> And so uh, that's, that's, but we want to make sure we're spreading out and we're right. going to talk to more alumni of mm -hmm. the sciences. Yeah. Let students know what you can do with science degrees. And so it's, I love the fact that you're not doing research, but what I find really interesting is it, your passion for helping people mm -hmm. is right. evident in everything you've said so far. And, and I was going to jump on that too, that yeah. you went in wanting to, to teach and wanting to help students, mm -hmm. and this is sort of still kind of fulfilling a it, little bit it of is, that. It you is. You've um, narrowed in and focused on how you're helping students. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And I, it's, I love that. And, and I think that, that at the university level, um, there actually are a lot of us sort of hiding in, in, the, in the cracks in the woodwork, <laughs> little mice running out at night, um, that are there to sort of help with the infrastructure of making sure everything works. Right. Right. So, so uh, you know, the university is a funny place. Uh, faculty come here and they choose their thing that they want to do, mm -hmm. and they and they you know we've got great faculty here who do great things, but they they need students to come to them to help. Yeah. They sure. need. Um, they, they need uh, assistance with the courses that they teach. Mm -hmm. uh, they need an infrastructure, a physical infrastructure of where to do this sort of work. Yeah. Um, 
and and there are a lot of us, uh, many of us who, who tend to come from science backgrounds, right? Mm-hmm. So we, we we can understand what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Could never do it. Yeah, <laughs> but I can understand what they're doing. Uh, it's nice the, having that language, right? You yeah. can right. interpret it to it is. what I want to say. More normal people, <laughs> yes, <yeah. laughs> to what the heck they're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's nice, you know. So when I I, I spend a lot of time, my time actually, you know, working with with the graduate students in mm-hmm. chemistry, right? And and sometimes they come in with with you know fun sorts of problems and issues, and sometimes not so much fun. Mm-hmm. But but in in any case, if if I talk to them about the work that they do. I, it's it's still exciting to me to sort of yeah. see sure, what it is, understand going. what they're doing, yeah. um, uh, and it's exciting to them too. I think sometimes to know that that you know they know more about it than I do. Oh, I and, think and they're becoming they're, experts. They're yes, becoming that's experts. What they're doing. Yeah. And that's, that's why they're that's, here. That's the point of the university. Yes. Right? Yeah, I noticed that even in the high school classroom, if students had a project and they would really mm-hmm. start you know taking that on and um, taking ownership of that, then they would get really excited. There were a lot of times they would learn things that I didn't. No, because right. I hadn't done it, and they're so proud that they right. are starting to develop that. That's good. Mm-hmm. And it's really, you're in, did I cut you off? No. no. Right. You sure? Uh-huh. All right. I didn't want to be too rude. Uh, a little rude. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> it, there are lots of students that I talk to in different places, and a lot of them come from smaller schools. Mm-hmm. And they don't, it, you, a university is very intimidating. Right. Um, any university, let alone something as huge as Purdue, right. and because uh, there's a lot of smaller universities sometimes they go to because they're just too intimidated. But it's really, it's really, really reassuring for them to realize that there are people that's going to help them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not just in this big place on your own. Right. But there's people that's going to help you. I mean, from the undergrad time you get here as an undergrad, right. there's mm-hmm. advisors, there's people you can go to, then there's other supports as far as um, having troubles with math. Well, we have this whole math room. Right. You have troubles with your introductory chemistry classes. Well, that's why we have this whole, right. uh, mm-hmm. what's that room called? Uh, resource. 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 Yes, resource yep. room. Yep. And so there's all these resources set up at university to help people succeed. Right. And I mean, the only way you're not going to succeed in an academic situation like this is that you just didn't take advantage of all the resources around you mm-hmm. because they're there. Yeah. And so I think it's so important for people to realize that we have people here to help you. Right. And just use those and take advantage of those. And so what advice for someone, I was working with the grad students mainly. Now, okay. Right, like, remember, like, my, my previous position was in first year engineering. Oh, right? so that's I was, right. I was oh, working right. with yeah. first year students. Well, let's start there. Students. What mm-hmm. advice would you give to someone that's, all right, maybe a, maybe a high school student is listening to this in right. their class or outside mm-hmm. of their class, and they're like, okay, I'd really like to be able to get into a university and do things. Mm-hmm. So, what advice would you have to them, and then transition from there into, it, it, I'm a high school student, and Okay, I want to do that, but I want to get deeper and end up being in that research too. I don't know. I asked you like four questions. You did. You did. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll start at the end and work forward. Um, so I mean, I think that the, the advice that we often gave to, to first year students once they were here, mm-hmm. right, is, is uh, to get to know people. So so especially at a big place, mm-hmm. um, you know, where I used to work was a much smaller place, so we could sort of force them to get to know the faculty. Right. But, yeah. but at a big place like this, it is very easy for a student to come in and, and sit in the back row mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. watch the lectures and do all the homework and, and you know, pass, get, get good grades and just do well on the tests and move on, but not really get out of it what, what a university has to offer. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's, it can be hard, especially if you're introverted or nervous or, yeah. or sometimes you know, students come in thinking that they don't necessarily belong here, which is, of course, wrong. Right. We, they're here. We want them here. You know, we, we brought them here because we think they can succeed here. Mm-hmm. Um, but students need to, to make the effort to, to get to know people. Um, one of the one of the secrets of faculty, you, go, you all have learned this yeah. with this podcast, right? Is that if you go to faculty member and say, tell me about your research, yes. they'll talk to you for half yes. an hour. Yes. Right? <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's, we it's, cut a lot out of these yeah, podcasts. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, we've been here for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, that's a, it's, an, it's an easy first question, even for a first-year student, to, mm-hmm. to you know, go to one of their professors and say, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in what's happening at the university. I'm interested in doing research. I, I looked on your website. It's good to know a little bit about them first. Mm-hmm. I looked on the, your mm-hmm. website, and I see that you do, you know, whatever you do. And that's, I think that's interesting. Can you tell me more about it? Mm-hmm. And, and um, there's not a faculty member on campus. I mean, whether some of them might say, I'm busy right now. Great to do. Right. I'll yeah. tell you later. Yeah. Um, but other than that, they'll, they'll 
be receptive to them. They want to know. They want to be able to talk about their stuff. They want to share what they've got. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's an opportunity then for the student to begin to see, okay, how can I fit into this? And even ask that question next to like, how can I fit into this? Is there, right. is there, are there volunteer opportunities in your laboratory? Um, are there credit opportunities in your laboratory? Mm -hmm. right? and, and start to get those relationships. Um, it, at a big university like Purdue, and I, I went to the University of Illinois, so just as big when I was an mm -hmm. undergrad, mm -hmm. um, you're never going to know all 40,000 people. No. <laughs> right. Right. So it, it, the, the critical thing is to find your little group of, yes. of mm -hmm. 10, 20, 25, 30 people that you know well and that know your skills and that you can do really interesting things with. That's great. I know yeah. that's something when my son came here, he's, he's still here, but uh, I pushed him to find those groups, right. you know, be, actively seek out groups to be involved with. Right. And so he looked at both the groups in his major and joined some of those. Mm -hmm. and then he looked at groups of his interest, which right. was like the band. Mm -hmm. You know, and he, he and so he's has those clicks now after after just a year of starting to look for them. That's who all his friends are. Yep. Ones in there, and they can support each other, and they can yeah. talk the same language. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea what they're talking about, but <laughs> they can talk to each other the same language because that's what they're researching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the key thing that you said there, which was good advice for your son, is that they have to actively seek this out. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and that's I, I think that would be advice that I would give to any student coming to the university for the first time is uh, don't make it a passive endeavor. Yes. You mm -hmm. go out and, and, and take what's yours and yeah. find your place. I like that. you got to get Me out of too. your comfort zone sometimes, you too. Do. Sometimes you do. Sometimes it's not easy. It is, it is not easy. And, um, yeah. But, but that's, that's how you can get the best of yeah. it. So I think leading into then to the to students who are wanting to get into a graduate program, mm -hmm. this is sort of a busy time of year for you, isn't it? <laughs> so, so yeah. So, so uh, we're recording this on December thirteen. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, the the grad applications from our program, and I help manage the, the admissions, are due on December fifteen. Oh. Uh, we've got around 300 completed applications for our program as of today. Oh, wow. Uh, I expect another 400 in the next two days. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody turns it in at the last minute. Wow. Um, yeah. So but how many positions are open for them? We Well, so again, we've got about 330 graduate students in our program. And a grad program typically lasts about five years. Mm -hmm. So you know, okay. if you do the math, we're, we're looking at 60 to 70 new students per year okay. coming into our program. So, but you're looking, wow, that's 10%. So, so right, well, 10% yeah. come. I mean, we, we accept okay. more than that because obviously, we, you know, if we accept a top student, they've probably okay. been accepted somewhere else, too, okay. and, and they haven't, you know. They've made up their mind yet. They haven't made up their mind yet, okay. and, and mm -hmm. sometimes they make bad decisions and go somewhere else. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so uh, yeah, so so it's it's a it's a big process. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll, I'll say if a student, again, is sort of looking long down the road, trying to figure out where they're going to go, um, for graduate school, we look for research. We look for research experience. Oh. We look for sort of a research mindset. Um, okay. you know, it, it's uh, the undergrad program at a lot of universities, including Purdue. A lot of it is you know learning the stuff that we already know, mm -hmm. so that you've got the background to potentially later on and go do something new. Uh, and the graduate program is the going and doing something new. So that's mm -hmm. that's what we look for in the applications: is uh, evidence of research ability uh, or potential. Um, and that's where again. As, a, as an undergraduate, in the first year undergraduate, mm -hmm. getting to know the faculty so that you can get mm -hmm. into the lab, get your hands wet, you know, learn something about how research works. Um, that's kind of where that fits. That's where that fits, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it, there are some undergraduates who, who publish papers, who publish wow. yep. research, that happens. Yep. Uh, it's not expected that every undergraduate will do that, mm -hmm. but if you're going to go to graduate school and going to go to a research career, it is expected that as an undergraduate you get into the lab so that you begin to understand what research looks like. Mm -hmm. It's it's really neat feeling too, being able to contribute to science. It is. it is. I remember my the first publication that I was mm -hmm. a part of, I remember uh, John Harbour, he said, now you realize the Library of Congress has a file for you now. Yep. And I'm like, what? That's what? Cool. What? <laughs> He's yeah. like, yeah, you have a file of the Library of Congress for your public. And I'm like, that is crazy. Yep. Yeah. The the first publication that I was on, um, I I shouldn't admit this. I have not read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. But it was a it was a, 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 a oceanic core sediment core mm -hmm. study uh, from a, a bay in California, and I didn't go. But the samples came back to our lab, and I did a lot of the sulfur speciation work on those, you know, trying wow. to figure out what the forms of sulfur were. And it was all mm -hmm. sort of standard, you know, 
classical wet chemistry, a lot of, of you know, standard analysis, stuff that you can do as an undergraduate, mm -hmm. right? stuff yeah. that is similar to the techniques that we teach in our undergraduate laboratories. Um, and I did that for a semester and built this data set, and you know, because I was building that data set, I was contributing to the paper, I was listed as one of several authors on the paper because I had contributed to that data. Um, I'll still say, this is embarrassing, maybe I should look it up. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't claim to understand everything that was yeah. in that paper, and but that's but a lot of people don't realize you're contributing when contributing, you say right. publish. That doesn't mean you have to know everything about this and right. do everything. Mm -hmm. right. That's why we that's why we publish as a team. Right, is mm -hmm. everyone contributes and does their part, and they all get recognition for right. that. Right, um, and science often moves forward as a team. Right, I mean it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it is a team sport. Yeah, so I all right. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I'm asking you to jump into your sales pitch then. Okay. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm thinking, okay, I, I do want to eventually go to grad school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you've said right now Purdue has the second largest in, in chemistry, in, chemistry right. mm -hmm. for, uh, in the U.S., but why would I want to come to Purdue? Uh, uh, let's see, here's a yeah, question yeah, we've yeah, not yeah, asked people right. before. So, <laughs> so uh, see, uh, you weren't ready for this one. Yeah. No, I, I, I get that question, right, because I, I do that sales pitch. Um, so, so what I often tell students who are juniors and seniors in college, mm -hmm. right, who are, are looking to apply, um, that if they've decided that grad school is their career pathway, and if they've decided mm -hmm. that you know, they're going on to an academic or an industrial career with a PhD, that the most important decision that they make is going to be who their major advisor is. It's actually even more important than the university that you go to. Um, but the most important decision is who your major advisor is. So that's something that, that they should be looking at as they're thinking of applying to Purdue or to whatever other university, is who are the faculty? And look mm -hmm. carefully at the faculty that are there. Are there people who are doing things that they're interested in? Are there yeah. people who are doing cool work, publishing well? Are there people who are... are um, making a, a difference, right? And, mm -hmm. and that's where I think Purdue chemistry has a real strength. We have a fantastic faculty. Um, that you do. We yeah. were, they, you know, I'm amazed at some of the things that they do. Uh, uh, and then also uh, another, you know, sort of yay, yay Purdue. We're also, again, we're particularly large, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we, mm -hmm. we have about 55 uh, active research faculty associated with chemistry, either in our department or in other departments, but mm -hmm. with, with split appointments with us. Um, and that's 55 different opportunities for a student coming in. Right, so they can come in. And resources once they're here, right? Resources yeah. once they're here. Because it's, sometimes you say, oh, it's a really large one. And people are like, oh, that's intimidating. But no, that just means you have that much more resources and choices. Right, right. It, it, even if you come in and you're like, well, this isn't the best fit for me. Mm -hmm. Well, there's lots of mm -hmm. places yep. that are run parallel to that. Right, right. You have and, lots of choices. And again, that's part of my job in the department is when, when a student does realize that it's not the best fit with a particular mm -hmm. advisor, I'm, I'm there to help find the right place for them. Wow. Um, and at Purdue, we've got a lot of opportunities, so yes. that's good. All right, so that's awesome. uh, yeah. advice, my daughter, she's early high school sophomore okay. right now. And um, let's say that she's thinking, oh, I'd like to go to Purdue. It, what does she need to do now to be to stand out, to make sure she can get in and be one of your star chemistry students? So. Um, I'm not sure what the best answer to that because I've never done undergrad admissions, but um, I mean, it, it, grades are important. Good, good mm -hmm. classwork is important. That's that's going to be you know sort of the, the baseline. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think motivation is important. So so making it clear through what she does, either what activities she's working with, or, or what she's got, and also what she writes in her personal statements and essays in the mm -hmm. application, making right. it clear why she wants to do this. Why does she want to go to Purdue? What is it about the the long-term goals of her life, mm -hmm. that, that this is the right next step. Um, you know, I, 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 again, I've never done undergraduate admissions, yeah. but I, I have done graduate admissions, and, and that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for, for people who uh, have demonstrated that they can probably be successful, and that's where the grades come in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and have demonstrated that they have a definite plan for where they want to go and can clearly see how Purdue is going to help them on that plan. Okay. But, to me, that's ideal and because yeah. when you're telling them, I, I want you to look ahead. Right. I want you to be thinking ahead. Right. Don't just say, well, hmm, I kind of like this. Maybe I'll go there for that. You're not thinking ahead of what you could do. You've not done your research to see what you mm -hmm. could do. I know when my son was in high school, that's when we sat down. And he he'd already looked at a lot of it, but then he looked at it again with me, just kind of bouncing ideas off me to get my two cents worth, mm -hmm. which I appreciated. And um, but yeah, he's like, I don't really think I want this because 
that's not really where I want to be led. Right. Instead, I'm looking at, and uh, it's, I appreciate that he did that, and I thought that was such a good thing mm -hmm. for a student to be able to do is think, what do you want after this? Always right. think about the next step. Right. And, and it doesn't have to be too specific either, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, it, it's, it's also a recipe for disaster for someone like your daughter who's a sophomore yeah. in high school to say, this is my yes. <laughs> one job I'm going to go for, right? right? Um, so it doesn't have to be very specific what the goal is, but, but the sort of general plan, the general hope, the, 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 the area that you want to be working in, the type of work that you want to do. Um, and, and again, one of the benefits of Purdue is that you, know, you can change your mind once you get here. Because yeah. we've, we've That was going to be my question. <laughs> right. is, so what happens with the student that thinks they want to know or maybe doesn't know what they want to do and then they sort of start down a path and then decide, I don't know if this is for me. I want to, but just, but, but initially just sort of having something. Yeah, when they're writing the statement, having having some some passion, some sort of clear okay. plan of passion. I mean, it, it's it's. Um, I, I would guess again that that you know sort of the worst college admissions essay is going to be that well I want to go to college because it's the next thing. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you that's should, not showing vision. That's not showing vision, right? <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. We appreciate thank you coming you and yeah. uh, tolerating this, being our first video victim. I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you love superheroes of science, be sure to subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes or your preferred podcast player. Be sure to join us as we add interviews of scientists and incorporate discussions of current trends in K-12 science. Until next time, be super, and remember, you are someone's hero. Boiler up. Hammer down. <laughs>